And this is a little bit interesting and different, even though it's still about computers, because that's what we deal with. And we've looked at heat sinks. So this particular heat sink video is going to be about the PS5. What's the list of PS5 heat sinks? And that's what this will be. So I think what we need to do is start from the source. Let's look at what the requirements are. Then we can ascertain what direction we need to go. As again, we go down the rabbit hole and uh, into the weeds. So we're going to start on the PlayStation site. And we'll have this link up in the description. Which M.2 SSDs can be used in a PS5 console? Okay, it has to be an M.2 NVMe. It does not support an M.2 SSD. We'll clear that up first. Requirements for the consoles. PCI Express 4.0, and that by 4 means 4 lanes, for an M.2 NVMe SSD. It'll take up to a 4 terabyte drive, so we're probably going to be looking to have listed 2 terabyte. Now the formats, this is interesting. 2280 is what we focus on because 2280 is what you'll find on heat sinks. The width up to 25 millimeter. Okay, your width on your M.2 NVMe drives, that's the dimension. 22, 22 millimeters, 80, 80 millimeters long. So 22 millimeters wide to reiterate, 80 millimeters long. That's what your heat sinks are going to be. And uh, a length going through that. Now here's the crucial part, the thickness, up to 11.25 millimeter. Of the three things that we're looking at when we're looking at a heat sink, one, it has to be passive. We'll get into that. Two, we're looking for something for speed because of the heat. So we want a carriage or wrap around. So you're going to have your memory with, you're going to have two pads, one on each side. You're going to have your wrap around where you can get some compression. Then you have your heat sink on top. Okay, all that sandwich has to be 11.25 millimeter. I was excited about the Gigabyte Aorus copper heat sink. Too big. This will not fit in a PS5 and I thought it would. So what I'm going to do is measure it right quick and I'll show you what I mean. And I want to thank Joey for letting us borrow this because I told him, I said, I've measured it, but I'd like to get it measured on screen. Okay, that measures out at 11.6, and the most we can hope for is 11.25. So this is too thick. That's a hair bigger than 11.5 millimeters. So to reiterate, 11.6 millimeters, which means that ain't going to work, which is a bummer. But that's only for a, uh, a PS5. The dimensions are more crucial in a PS5 than they are on a computer motherboard. And of the three locations we're looking at, number one, a dual adapter. Number two, a quad adapter that does not have its own cooling solution that should. And then the third location is on the motherboard, which is what we were doing with this. And now that we have the dimension of it, we know what we can and cannot do. This is still perfect for a computer, but not going to work in a PS5. But I'm going to have it on the list for those that are interested uh, so you can compare and see what all is involved. And remember, we modified this uh, by two ways. One, because this is for a first generation drive, we put a second generation drive. So we went from 5,000 megabytes to 7,000 megabytes. Number two, we used thermal grizzly pads, which gave us a value of 8 W over MK to increase that uh, performance. These are great. These are heavy, but I can see putting these on a dual. I can see putting these on a quad. As heavy as they are, they still fit and they work on a motherboard even when you've got components and you're worried about cards over it. we got two more heat sinks we're going to be doing and some more videos coming up, courtesy of Pablo, that uh, blows this out of the water in terms of space because it's not about the size, it's about cooling capacity. And I have no idea, and I'll find out when you do, about how they test. But this is about a list for the PS5, so let's continue on. So it talks about a sequential read speed of 5,500 megabytes or faster Okay, faster would be a second generation drive, which would be 7,000 megabytes. It talks about using an M.2 NVMe SSD, and they should specify that in there. Uh, requires a heat sink and a heat transfer sheet. Okay, the heat transfer sheet, that's your thermal pad. And depending on which one you use, and I've had quite a few comments with uh, one subscriber in particular kept asking me what I thought about the MHQ JRH. And I said, well, it's an okay performer, but you have to consider the parameters you're working with. Now, as I always say, change one thing changes everything. If you're going to use for a PS5, that's your number one requirement. Okay, that blows a lot of the other heat sinks out the door that we've been looking at because it has to meet the requirement for the thickness. And the MHQ JRH fits that protocol. Now, when we tested it, we only used one thermal pad. Why? Well, at the time, you have to remember going back, we were looking at a handful of heat sinks. I believe we started with six, went to eight, went to 10. I think we're up to 12 now. I'll have to double check the chart, which I have updated. 
Uh, but the point of it was we were trying to keep them all apples and apples. So as we go forward, all the heat sinks that have two pads, we're going to test with two pads. My point, when we tested the MHQJRH, we had one thermal pad. We used the stock pad. Okay. Stock pads are usually about 4 W over MK. These are 8. 8 W over MK. And that's important because you're going to be able to get better performance than what we did with the test we did, which I'll show you the numbers in a couple of minutes. Let's go back over and uh, see what's going on with the PS5 because I've got something else I want to show you. Now this drawing they've got is a good indication of what you're working with. I'm going to show you the first drawing. And this shows 11.25 millimeter. If you look down here in the bottom right, that's the dimension you're looking for. The other three drawings I think are a little bit confusing because the numbers are different. And uh, this shows the side view as we look at it in relation to the heat sink. 11.25 millimeter. So that's the dimension you've got to keep in mind. I think all the other heat sinks that we're going to be looking at, of which I want to show you the one from Gigabyte, that is for 7,000 megabytes, that is for a PS5, will meet those height requirements. So let's look at, this goes two ways. One, a carriage for an existing drive, and two, new drives coming out that have a carriage. Carriage meaning they have an undermount. So you've got uh, your main three parts. You've got your carriage, you've got your heat sink, and the other part is the thermal pad above and below the M.2 NVMe drive for that sandwich. And to reiterate, if you want to improve performance, these pads, which are the thermal grizzly. And I'll also have a link up to some other pads if you want to go that far. Now both single-sided and double-sided M.2 NVMe SSDs are supported, and they need to do some specificity on this documentation because it says here an M.2 SATA SSD is not supported. That is correct and I understand. But when it talks about the M.2 SSD, that should say specifically M.2 NVMe PCI Express SSD for that clarification. So I'm pointing that out. Another point of reference, it says not all games are necessarily playable with the exact same performance provided by the PS5 console's internal ultra high speed SSD. I would be really surprised if they're using a second generation PCI Express 4.0 NVMe drive. Based on the numbers they're given, they're probably using a first generation drive, which is around 5,000 megabytes. However, they say if your game doesn't perform the way you want, copy it to the internal drive. It's in this documentation. So one possibility for one of these PS5s, which we've already looked at, is the MHQ JRH. And of the heat sinks that we have tested, you're seeing the updated chart. There's two different numbers. I've numbered these according to heat based on the WD Black SN850 at the top. Number two, on the motherboard, underneath the heat sink on the TRX40 designator, which is the second heat sink, which is in that location there. Because we have two M.2 NVMe drives that are connected to the CPU. These two are the fastest. Primary here, secondary here. And the other two that are underneath the video card are under one heat sink, and these two are through the chipset. So that's the one where we tested where we got those numbers. So the MHQ JRH with one thermal pad using the stock thermal pads, which my guess would be were probably four W over MK, whereas the thermal grizzly minus pad, minus pad eight, meaning eight W over MK. So our results, you'll get better if you use these pads. Two ways to buy these, either in the strips, which you'll get two pads in a pack, or as I believe uh, one of our subscribers pointed out, buy the square pad, I believe it's 100 by 100 millimeters, Cut your strips, you'll end up with six pads, one across the end and the others. Hope that helps. And I'll have a link up to that. So that's one option for an existing drive. And for that existing drive, here's the thermal pad, thermal grizzly minus pad eight, two strips for 120 millimeters. So you're going to lose a good piece off the end of it since they've got to be 80 millimeters. The other listing we'll have up will show that same pad 100 by 100. And at this dimension, we're showing this one millimeter. So one millimeter above, one millimeter below. And I put this in the list because this is what we tested so you can check the temps on the chart we just showed you. Love it, but won't fit in the PS5 because it's too big. However, this one will. This is a Gigabyte Aorus Generation 4, 7,000 megabytes, SSD, NVMe. It's got nanocarbon coated aluminum heat sink technology on it. The first one was copper. It was for a first generation. This is, as I've just described, for a second generation. We have not tested one of these. I have no idea how this will pan out, but it will fit in a PS5. And it uses uh, two screws on each side. So you've got a sandwich that's already there that will fit. 
And if it works in a PS5, it'll work on a motherboard. So if anybody wants us to test one, let us know. Get in touch with us. We'll be happy to. But to reiterate what I told Joey, I'm not getting any more PCI Express 4.0 drives. Not with PCI Express 5 staring us in the face. Another question came up about the Be Quiet. Be Quiet makes two. The Be Quiet MC1 and the MC1 Pro. Okay, the MC1 will fit. I have no idea what kind of temps it'll get. The MC1 Pro will not. And I don't know what the uh, dimensions are. 4x1x4, four by by four, that's probably packaging. They don't, they're not showing the actual thickness. If we test one, I'll let you know. Be Quiet says they are restocking these. I will have this link up. And at the time this video is going out, today is probably about the uh, middle of the month. Uh, they said a couple of weeks, so probably by uh, 1st of November, 2021. And this is one we just did a video on. This is about the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. The 530 with that heat sink, which is EKWB. We tested the EKWB heat sink, which is in this box. And the uh, heat sink was fine, but what I didn't like was the clips and what it took to, to put those on there. Had me worried I was going to tear up the memory. Okay, this is one that you would put on existing memory. I like what they're doing with this heat sink that's going to be on the Seagate Fire Cuda 530 because it's going to fit in the box. It's smaller. And I cannot tell how it's mounted, but I can tell it does not use those little clamp-on clips like we had. And because it's sold with the drive as is, it should perform better. And some of you had mentioned about the Sabrent. So here's an article from Tweaktown that talks about Sabrent details, their PS5 SSD heatsink. Prepare to upgrade your PS5. Good article. What I like about this, there's also a video embedded. And we will have a link to that embedded video in our video. Because if you'll look at the description, this also gives you the links straight into Amazon for the PS5 heatsink. And I'll also have those links up in our video, but we'll be using affiliate links. And that will be available two ways. One, to buy just the Sabrent M.2 NVMe PS5 heatsink, or to buy the Sabrent M.2 NVMe drive, which is the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus with that heatsink for the PS5. And the only thing you might want to do, again, to reiterate, change out the thermal pad. We'll have a link on this. It's coming out. It says it'll be released on October the 13th of 2021. And for those of you who want to check this chart out, I'll leave it up just for a minute so you can check it and see the heat sinks we've looked at. Our two best performers, irregardless of size, that will not work in a PS5 were number five, the Sabrent Rocket 3 heat pipe at 54 degrees. Number two, the Acidly, which is number nine on the list, which was four heat pipe at 48 degrees. However, for the heat sinks you guys are going to be looking at for a PS5, this is a list we're going to start it that can go two ways. One, for an existing drive, or two, to buy a drive with a heat sink already on it, good to go. And just remember your dimensions. We'll have this up. And I'll offer one last thing. If anybody would like for us to do a video about a PS5 and upgrading it, you're going to have to get in touch with me about that so we can make arrangements because one of you guys are going to have to supply the device. The first one I'll do so we can do a video and show everybody how to do it. But if anybody asks beyond the first one, you'll have to hire me as a client. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Gil Boyd. This is Builder Buy. I want to thank you for watching. We're on to the next video. We're out.